Uh, so we have with us uh, Harriet Bogdanovich. Who oh, oh, well done. Chief Strategy Officer at the American Planning Association. Uh, Jeffrey Brown, CEO at the National Association of per Personal Financial Advisors. And Terrence Sykes, Chief Growth Officer at the Emergency Nurses Association. Woo All right. I'm getting out of here. All right, so I, I'm officially the moderator, which means I don't have to do any work. So all of us know panels are the easiest thing in the world. It's super, super fun. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to start just go left to right. Um, not so much out of my presentation, but when you look ahead three to five years, um, is there what's the one or two things that really stand out for you that's going to be most substantive that you're going to have to adapt to? Like you're, you'll make different business decisions as a result of it. Let me go ahead and start with you, Jeff. I think for us, and this, uh, it was starting before the pandemic, um, but in the last 24 months, we've seen more competition from our former partners than we ever have before. And that's really causing us to rethink what the roadmap for the future of the association looks like. Uh, we're also seeing more and more young people entering the profession, knowing that they wanted to be financial planners versus, you know what, I was a school teacher yesterday and I have an interest in personal finance, so I'm going to switch and become a financial planner. So that's really changing how we're deploying our resources to really focus on the next generation of planner. Excellent. Well done. Short and concise. You'll never be a good speaker talking like that. Uh, next, go ahead. I totally agree on the, on the competition side. Um, you know, for us, it's not necessarily... Uh, people who we partner with on the outside, it's it's somewhat people are re sh or shifting what they're currently um, working on or their current mission there, so they're expanding. I, I think the, the other piece uh, to me is really centers around growth. So when you talk about the cathedral, uh, that really resonates for me because it's, I like to build, I like to grow. Um, and I think that that's what's gonna be necessary for really all associations as we move forward. So when I think about co the competition side, some of it becomes where are the strategic alliances, uh, where are the, the acquisition, so to speak, uh, strategic partnerships. Look at competition that way, that still allows you to build your brand and be successful. Excellent, Harry. When I think about... Not yet. That was very insightful, though. Thank you. Next. But it's not really on. There we go. Awesome. I'm now on? All right. You're doing fine. So our association works with urban planners, and they are thinking not just about the cathedral, but about the entire community in which the cathedral sits. Post-pandemic rethinking communities for our members is sort of at epic proportions. They're looking at a huge huge picture. Um, and for them, the biggest disruption that will affect our association is around technology. Um, as they think about things like how artificial intelligence informs their ability to use data sets, as they think about autonomous vehicles and what it means to live in a smart city that is wired from head to toe, as they think about um, all kinds of things really that have to do with how they use technological tools they're going to be looking to not just us, but any resource they can find to understand what that means in terms of their ability to stay relevant, demonstrate competence, compete in a marketplace, and contribute to sort of reimagining our world after COVID. Sure. Um, so I think that that's kind of the biggest thing we're thinking through, because in order to really understand the technological impacts on our profession and be prepared for it, we need to know what's coming before they are trying to deal with it. Sure. And having that kind of a foresight practice in place is what we're really giving serious thought to. That's a great segue. And I'm going to tell a short story so you can prepare yourself because now we're going right to left. And yet, don't, you're not off the hook. We'll start in the center too. So after the financial crisis, or really during, you know, Montana Bankers Association was one of our clients. I was doing interviews with, you know, bank CEOs. And, and the question I asked them, it's a question I want you to think about, all three of you, is if you'd known the financial crisis was company, coming, like what would have been the canary in the coal mine on that? And I always remember one of the bank CEOs said, you know, in my community, when the roofer was making more money than the bank president, that should have told us there was a housing bubble. There's no, you know, like that, that was out of whack. So now my question to you is, if I, if I pull you aside in 2018, 2017, and say you're about to be struck by a pandemic, how, what would you have done differently or your association to prepare yourself for it? What lessons would, have to be, would you learn? What would we have done differently in 
2019 to prepare. Yeah, well, think, if you knew a pandemic was coming, what would you have done differently? I think we, we would have immediately pivoted to a customer centric model sooner. So what I think we learned out of the pandemic was that there isn't a one size fits all for members. They aren't interested in what we are building unless we've asked them what they need and developed a solution that is personalized to them. And that really came to the fore when people were struggling and needed advice and solutions that there isn't a homogeneous membership. And so we quickly were able to adjust and deliver very timely, very specific solutions for members based on their practice setting, their geographic location, their career stage, whatever you might have it. If you had asked me in 2019 if we were able to do that and if we were doing it consistently to deliver value, I would probably have hesitated okay. a little bit. And so I think that moving forward, that's the number one lesson we're taking away is that the customer is at the center of everything we do and forget the sacred cows, forget what we thought we were gonna do, forget what we budgeted. We're learning to work with the customer and uh, agility kind of at the heart of our business. Nice, great point, go ahead. I really appreciate that one. Um, I think for, for me, I, with the Emergency Nurses Association, I, I'm gonna have to say I, I feel really good about where we were and what we were doing. And I think when the pandemic happened, it allowed us to respond in a way that um, accelerated some of the things that we were working on. What it did is it removed some of those barriers that we tend to have in front of us. It said, okay, we gotta do this now. So I think, you know, we had already started working on infrastructure pieces because we have been forward looking. Um, and so that allowed us really to uh, bring some of that uh, customer centric focus what do they need and bring it right to them so they weren't leaving uh, where they, they currently practice. So I think for me, it was uh, what I'm excited about the future is getting, always having that mindset of what's next. How do you prepare for the next big thing? How, what does your infrastructure look like to support that? That's what I think is really important. That's a great point. I'm, I'm actually gonna just make a quick comment about what you mentioned in terms of timeliness. I think our paradigm and associations for what's considered timely is vastly different today than it yeah. was in 2019. Yeah. Because if someone had tried to say, let's do a new project in 2019, it would be like, okay, well, let's take about two years before this gets through the board and our budget. Pro now it's like, wow, we're, we're moving a lot faster. Yeah. So I yep. definitely. All, all of us, by the way, for, for the rest of our lives, we'll be like, this is a hard year. Well, it's not pandemic hard. You know, like, well, it'll be, it'll be crap like that. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm going to open this to the audience for questions after uh, you uh, go. Go ahead. Uh, it, it's interesting that you brought up the financial crisis. So our members are all personal financial advisors. They all are still scarred by what happened in 2008 and 2009. So in the, the fall of 2019, we had a significant conversation about when's the next recession coming. So we didn't have to have the conversation about what our financial response was going to have to be in March and April of 2020 because we had already done that. We'd already put the plans into place, so we were able to focus on what Harry was talking about, about being more member-centric, because that was a blind spot for us. You know, we were focused on business development for our members. We were focused on creating the conditions for them to find clients, but we weren't doing the